Judge Torres determined that Ripple's actions would have indicated to these knowledgeable investors that it was proposing a speculative value proposition in XRP linked to the success of Ripple Labs as a result of these interactions. The SEC published a similar analysis in its Framework for Investment Contract Analysis of Digital Assets back in 2018. This type of analytical paradox is not unusual. However, it should serve as a warning to crypto enterprises with a public face that, depending on how they sell their tokens and market their offers to various target markets, they may still face punishment. Fortunately for the cryptocurrency sector, the ruling outlines several actions businesses can take to determine whether their operations comply with a securities laws. Judge Torres, for instance, determined that the inclusion of lockup terms, resale limits, indemnification clauses, and indemnifications of purpose in Ripple's purchase contracts made them resemble investment contracts. Additionally, XARP coins and their performance were portrayed as being closely related to Ripple Labs' success in the company's market reports and even brochures distributed to prospective investors. Additionally, it didn't help that Ripple Labs' leadership bragged on YouTube and Reddit about how the firm might increase the price of XRP by generating interest in particular types of capital investments in Ripple. The SEC may at this point ask the Second Circuit to review Judge Torres' ruling, and it likely will. Even while it fell short of all the cryptocurrency industry had hoped for, the Ripple ruling does offer a path out of the current legal uncertainties plaguing the sector. Harris St. Laurent Wieschler LP partner Andrew St. Laurent resides in New York. He was a member of the legal team defending Ishan Wahi, a former product manager at Coinbase in Sex UV. Wahi, one of the first set cases to assert that cryptocurrencies are securities. First chair trial lawyer Andrew has tried more than 20 cases to verdict in federal jury trials, fine raw, AIA and JAMS arbitrations, as well as several bench and jury trials in New York State courts, an employment lawsuits shareholder, and partnership conflicts, as well as criminal and regulatory problems, he frequently represents both the plaintiff and the defendant. An important decision in the ongoing sex EV. Ripple Labs litigation was made on July 13, 2023. Bradley Garlinghouse and Christian A. Larson, two of Ripple Labs' senior executives, were charged by the U.S. Senior Executives, Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC, with marketing and selling securities in an unauthorized manner. Honorable Analyza Torres, a district judge in the United States District Court for the Southern District of New York, presided over the case, the court's decisive split allowing and rejecting the sex and Ripple's request for summary judgment. The sex request for summary judgment about the institutional sales was granted, although it was turned down for other reasons. However, while Ripple's request for summary judgment was refused regarding the institutional sales, it was granted about the programmatic sales, other distributions, and sales made by Larson and Garlinghouse. On the aiding and abetting claim against Larson and Garlinghouse, the sex request for summary judgment was likewise rejected. The judge's assertion that XERP, as a digital token, does not satisfy the Howey conditions of an investment contract, indicating that the court does not consider XERP to be a security, was a crucial takeaway from the decision. The president of Ripple, Monica Long, recently spoke with KenBC about the company's expanding global footprint and its partly legal triumph. Long acknowledged her happiness with the court's decision, saying it gave Ripple's operations much needed clarity. However, Long also stressed that much of Ripple's growth over the years has been outside the US, in regions where there is a clear regulatory framework for cryptocurrencies. The decision has allowed Ripple to re-engage with the US market. Long named several governments that have made explicit frameworks and regulations for cryptocurrencies including the UK, Europe, Singapore, and Dubai. The company of Ripple has significantly expanded in several areas, particularly in the area of payments. As a big fintech hub and a nation where Ripple is seeking to boost its investment, the UK was singled out. 
This fits nicely with the UK's goal of developing legislation specifically for cryptocurrency businesses to make it a hub for the industry. Over time, Ripple's presence in London has dramatically increased, with the office's size more than tripling. Additionally, Ripple has a sizable customer base in Europe and the Middle East, with Dubai serving as another important hub. Ripple has experienced expansion beyond Europe and the Middle East, particularly Asia and Latin America. Long stated that Ripple has been heating up in Latin America especially, with a main office situated in Sao Paulo. The SEC action, according to Ripple's official response to the partial victory over the regulatory authority, was nothing more than misinformation. XARB didn't seem to be in the best of spirits for days after the victory. The blockchain company Ripple emphasized that the ruling safeguards both banks and retailers. 800 million XRP were sent by Ripple to its escrow wallet. Finally, Ripple XRP responded in depth to its July 13 partial victory over the US SEC. SEC, although the company stated its satisfaction with the decision soon after it was made, its most recent coup market report sheds a lot of light on some common misconceptions regarding the issue. Although Ripple released the report on July 31, it wasn't made public until August 2. The SEC's legal action against Ripple, in its opinion, was misguided and motivated by a desire for political power. Ripple corrected some of the judgment's misunderstandings nevertheless. The company claims that XARP offers security not just in some places but everywhere. The declaration that the same thing can be sold to buyer uh, as part of a straightforward buy-sell transaction and also sold to buyer B as part of an investment contract is a non-controversial statement of the law, according to Ripple, who accused the SEC of being a propagandist merchant. The SEC's counterproductive propaganda hassle legally foe. Additionally, Ripple responded to certain remarks that claimed the ruling favored institutional investors over the retail group. Consumers need protection, but not all roads lead to the SEC, the blockchain startup claimed, arguing that the idea was wholly untrue. If the SEC's overreach has revealed a regulatory gap, it is not the court's, and most definitely not the SEC's responsibility to close that gap. Meanwhile, Ripple once again locked 800 million XRP by sending it into an escrow wallet, according to the cryptocurrency wallet Sleuth Whale Alert. The SEC may ask for a review of the judge's ruling, and it probably will. The recent SEC v. Ripple Lab's decision has been heralded as a major victory for the cryptocurrency industry. In a sense, it is. What stands out most from Judge Annalisa Torres 34? Page decision, she said that because Ripple Labs was anonymously selling XARP to regular users of digital exchanges, it had not broken any U.S. securities regulations. The Securities and Exchange Commission's protracted battle to try to regulate cryptocurrencies via judicial order and piecemeal actions is now significantly hampered by this. Yes, XRP holders should be ecstatic to finally be able to possess and buy XRP coins without any restrictions. The decision has already changed the sex approach to similar instances involving athletes like Terra. That does not always mean that the new crypto projects of today are risk-free. When determining whether Ripple Labs sold unregistered securities, Judge Torres established two standards of review one for how it handled XRP sales to sophisticated hedge funds and other institutional investors, and another for how it handled the average consumer investor who uses publicly accessible cryptocurrency exchanges. In the process, she discovered that Ripple Labs sold unregistered securities to skilled investors, but not to casual cryptocurrency traders, this distinction was made by Judge Torres because it average investors who bought XRP from 2011 to 2020 on exchanges did not obtain any investment, related marketing materials, direct communications, or binding legal agreements from Ripple when they traded XRP. Contrarily, given how digital exchanges work, many of these traders would not have known if they had acquired their tokens from Ripple Labs. She discovered that, in contrast, 
The institutional investors to whom Ripple made a presentation relied on the company's token purchase contracts, marketing materials, executive speeches, and communications outlining its function in generating value for the XRP tokens.